Okay, so the last, the last talk of the session, <coughs> we have uh, okay, we have called this talk "Elastic Network SOC Architecture Driven by Parameterizable Hardware Accelerators." This is a research project. It's a work in progress. It's not a com commercial business. Yeah. Okay. This this project has been done jointly with Angela Gonzalez and Abdul Aziz Kane. All of them members of the Automotive in Vehicle Network Research Group in, in Munich Research Center. Okay, I have split this talk into parts. Basically, an introduction to our research group, focusing on the zonal gateway controller as a concept, and then moving forward to the Elastic Network SOC concept that we have developed basically from scratch just adopting ideas or thinking about the, the new problems uh, in the short future for, for automotive. So let's start with, with the, the first part. So our group basically focuses on in vehicle network research. So we create new technology in order to solve problems in this area. And we somehow envision or tackle, tackle this problem at three different levels of abstraction. Okay, so we tackle the problem at system or vehicle level, dealing with the, the system view of the vehicle as a cyber physical system, dealing with the, the network, how we interconnect nodes, how we distribute functionality there, and which are the right technologies in order to interconnect these different nodes. We also focus on the one specific component at component level, hardware software co-design of one specific ECU. In our case, we focus on the zonal gateway controller. And the third level of abstraction, the lowest level is the chipset level, okay? So as part of this hardware software co-design, we are open to deep dive on new hardware accelerators, new SOC architectures in order to accomplish these requirements that we see in the in-vehicle network and also in the zonal gateway controller. All in all, we develop new technology and prove these concepts, just prototyping these in real platforms like based on SOCs, microcontrollers, FPGAs. So somehow we are covering this, this three-dimensional view of the problem, uh, covering this vertical integration with, where somehow we are doing at the same time the job of OEM tier one and tier two, dealing with the in vehicle network, the zonal gateway controller as component, and the chipset or hardware accelerators, new coprocessors, new peripherals that could be integrated in the future SOC devices, covering all kind of technologies, as you can see here, from multi-gig multi -gig Ethernet, TSN, safety, cybersecurity, SDN, DDS, and so on. So what we realized based on the transition from, as, as, as I was commenting previously, in the transition from domain-based to zonal-based architecture, that the gateway is becoming a key component of the infrastructure, okay? Because everything, all the information, most of the information is traveling across zonal controllers. In that sense, if we have a look at the architecture of this vehicle, we can realize that somehow the gateway is responsible for this tunneling, hulling of different network technologies. Okay, so we have here the gateway is responsible for performing the capsulation, the capsulation of different network technologies, network protocols, in order to move data signals from A to B, transforming, encapsulating this, this information from different network protocols. Here we have some examples where we are dealing with uh, ECUs that are based on Ethernet CAN and LIN, and we need to transfer this data across the Ethernet backbone when moving data from one gateway to another. And then decapsulating or reconverting this, this information again back to a CAN message or LIN or, or, and so on. Okay, so this is one of the uh, jobs, one of the tasks assigned to this gateway. Concerning research technologies, what's important for this specific product? One of these technologies is just this gateway tunneling, routing, forwarding, the, the high performance, uh, the efficiency in doing this, this job, because as you can see in the image, 
every network technology has a different protocol. All the frames have a header, a payload, and a, and a trailer, but the meaning for them and the dealing, the, 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 the concept behind this frame is different. So we have to manage the different protocols in the, in the right way. Apart from that, another of the research technologies that are important for these specific zonal controllers are functional safety. So at system level, we identify different functions that have an AC level, okay? So automotive safety integrity level from A to B. And based on that, we need to guarantee the right implementation of these functions in order to comply with the fail operational or fail safe requirements. Okay, here we have some examples, like for instance, electronic po electric power steering is qualified as ACLD. So we need to implement this solution uh, according to this level of this level of, of requirements in terms of safety. Another aspect here for zonal gateway controller, taking into account that what we what we target is uh, a aut uh, autonomous connected electric and shared vehicle is cybersecurity due to the fact that this is going to be a connected vehicle. So we need to integrate inside this solution security mechanisms like firewall or intrusion detection systems, okay? Everything needs to be integrated there. And apart from that, another thing that is relevant for the zonal gateway controllers that was not the case for central gateways in the domain-based architecture is the applications, because these zonal gateway controllers are zonal controllers, are integrating on top of the networking applications, okay? So here we have some examples based on functions of different domains, like for instance, uh, powertrain, body, cockpit, others, connectivity, where we have, uh, we can have, uh, extringent requirements in terms of computation and also latency. For instance, for poorway train, we can have end-to-end -end latencies of less than one milliseconds or the same for others and autonomous driving. Here we have some examples. So based on that, on this kind of requirements, let's focus on the, on the, on the concept. And basically what we see is that the zonal gateway controller is probably one of the most complex networking devices ever due to the fact that inside the same architecture, we need to mix four different aspects, high performance networking, safety, security, and applications all together. Okay, so due to this fact, we can realize that a zonal controller is much more than a switch or a router in, in, in terms that this is not only for wording of Ethernet frames, it's something else because we are not dealing only with Ethernet frames. We are dealing with like a central gateway controller. We are dealing with other network protocols, LIN, CAN, FlexRay, MIPI, PCI Express. So it's much more than a router and a switch, okay? And it's also much more than a central gateway in the sense that we are combining networking functionality together with applications. Okay, so in terms of architecture, we need to design something bigger, okay? So now let's focus on that, okay? Which is our solution for this? So we have designed from scratch a new concept of elastic, what we call the elastic gateway or elastic network SOC in order to try to solve this challenge, okay? Let's start first with the related art. Today, this is one example of central gateway, how we solve the problem today. So basically today, the solution we have in a domain-based architecture in the vehicles that you can see in the street today is basically a software-centric implementation based on a microcontroller or SOC device. This is a real example, BMW central gateway, and this is the typical architecture in terms of chipset we have there, okay? So basically, as you can see in the left-hand side of the image, we basically have a main processor, gateway processor, a, a typical microcontroller or SOC device, and then connected to this MCU, 
we have the physical layers for CAN, LIN, FLEC ray, and so on. Inside the gateway processor, we have different peripherals in order to handle CAN, CAN controller, LIN controller there. And apart from that, we have externally, we have also Ethernet files or even Ethernet switches that are handled by the gateway controller. Okay. However, here, the solution, as I said, is, is software centric. So basically, the solution here is based on software fulfilling the AutoSAR architecture, where you can see here, basically, we have these different layers isolating hardware from software, application layer, we have the software components, running applications there. We have the RT in the middle, and below the RT, we have the stack of basic software with different levels, drivers, abstraction layers, and services, where somehow with this stack of software, what we do is just to make the software applications invariant, okay, agnostic to the, to the specific microcontroller that we, we use as hardware solution, okay? If we focus on the stack for communications, we can see that the solution is standardized based on, in this case, classic AutoSAR, and we have a, a set of building blocks that, at the end of the day, these are software proto function prototypes standardized in terms of, of prototypes and, and parameters there in order to organize the software in this way, okay? Just having these functional blocks, we have runnables executing this code, and we have events and callbacks in order to manage all the processing that we need in terms of networking. But one important thing here is just to realize that, for instance, in case that we want to encapsulate one CAN frame in order to be sent in an Ethernet frame, you can see that everything needs to be done in software in the sense that there is no hardware solution here that is able to take the frame coming from the reception buffer of CAN and moving, transforming this, this uh, frame in, encapsulated into an Ethernet frame. Everything is managed by the CPU or configuring DMAs if you want, but in the sense that in order to accomplish this function, we need to run instructions that at the end are converted in machine instructions executed by some CPU here. Okay, next step concerning related art, something that has been evolving this, is just to integrate in these network SOC devices some kind of hardware accelerator in order to speed up and improve the efficiency in this manipulation of frames, okay? And here is a real example from NXP, the vehicle network processor, where they integrate some kind of coprocessor called packet forwarding engine, where with this architecture, somehow we kind of load the CPU of a specific traffic that can be handled directly by the packet forwarding engine, okay? So in the left-hand side of the image, we have one system composed by a switch in the left side and the, and the vehicle network processor interconnected. And somehow here we have three different levels, three different layers, where as you can see in the right side of the image, some of the traffic is not necessary to go through the host CPU. It's managed directly either by the switch or by the packet forwarding engine in order to offload the host CPU from these time-consuming uh, jobs. Okay, so based on that, let's move now to our concept, what we are proposing here. And basically, this is the next, the next step on this evolution uh, concerning the transition from software-centric to something that is hardware-centric. So our ch challenge here is just to do the right co-design of hardware, software, and networking technologies in order to deliver a well-balanced zonal gateways controller solution able to fulfill high-performing safe and security requirements. Okay, so this is the challenge, just to design a SOC that meet fulfill all the requirements we have for this new zonal gateway controller. 
And this is the architecture, the simplified view of the architecture that we are proposing for this zonal gateway controller, SOC device, okay? We consider a full hardware-centric processing path from ingress to egress, okay? Everything here is going to be managed directly in hardware without the CPU intervention. Everything is going to be done automatically by intelligent hardware, okay? And we split this processing in four key stages, what we call frame or PDU normalization, filtering and policing, switching and gateway, and traffic shaping. So somehow, okay, we can recall this as SDN, matching and action, the typical matching and action that we have in a in, in a, in a um, programmable data plane solution presented by my colleague Naresh previously. And the last stage here is TSN, what, what uh, Mikkel was presenting in the, in the previous step. So here we have an architecture of a zonal gateway. In this case, we have a zonal gateway with four ingress ports merging CAN, FD, LIN, Ethernet, and Flare Ray, and in the supposed case of having egress ports, CAN, FD, and, and automotive Ethernet. And in this path, processing path, we have these four blocks that are going to become hardware blocks. If we did dive on that, okay, we can say that somehow we try to go Vidion, P4, and PISA solutions in terms that what we try to integrate in these matching and action stages is more heterogeneous function here. Not only networking, but additional functions should fit this concept of matching and action. A second view of this architecture is just to show how we try to accomplish the SDN concept, software-defined networking, okay? So for that, what we do is the following. We split these four stages in two planes, control plane and data plane inside the chip. Okay, so we apply the SDN concept, we shift this SDN concept into the chip. Okay, we develop two different planes where somehow part of the control plane, part of the intelligence is going to be managed directly inside the chip in the control plane. And for that, what we do is we connect the ingress frames into the data plane. But then in the first stage, the processing stage called uh, normalization or SDN, what we do is that for each ingress frame, we are going to split, we are going to generate two internal frames, the data frame and the instruction frame, okay? Where basically the instruction frame is going to be composed of metadata where somehow we are integrating the intelligence, the intelligence that the control plane requires in order to process these frames. So uh, how we normalize these frames? Because here the topic is that as ingress frames, we have heterogeneous networks, okay? We have CAN, LIN, FlexRay, Ethernet, right? The, the point here is that we need to design a chip able to manage whatever frame without caring about which protocol we have as ingress port, okay? Doesn't matter if this is CAN or Ethernet. Our hardware accelerator needs to manage everything without distinction of what frame uh, it is, okay? So the idea here is that we need to do this normalization stage where somehow we are standardizing the format and making this frame, new frame, uh, invariant to the network protocol, agnostic to this fact, okay? And for that, we have a look at the network OSI model where basically we see that in order to manage one frame at different levels, what we do is just to add information in the header. So somehow we are adopting this idea in order to perform this, what we called normalization, okay? So given an original ingress data frame, with header payload and trailer, what we could do in order to normalize this and make this invariant to the network protocol itself 
is just to add a new header and trailer there, right? We could do that, but we prefer to do the following, just to split this in two independent frames that are going to be moved across the device at the same rate, okay? Both frames are going to be transferred with two different parallel buses, but at the same time, because they are connected, okay? But in this way, all the intelligence, all the information required to process this, that the information that it's embedded in the frame in order to inform the hardware accelerator what to do with this frame is in the instruction frame, okay? And this is the control plane of our chip. And then the data frame keeps intouchable, okay? It keeps as it is. That's the idea. And this is the full view, the high-level design of our architecture. As you can see, this is going to become an SOC where for sure we are going to have CPUs, multi-core processors, ARM Cortex devices. This is fine, totally fine. We are also going to have RAM and flash. This is not a problem. The important point is the different blocks we have here. We have the four processing blocks, and then we interconnect these blocks through queues and crossbar switches, okay? This is the way to isolate one stage from the other, okay? So at the end, we have four different stages interconnected through queues and crossbar switches. You can notice that for every ingress frame, we have a different file. This can be CAN, LIN, Ethernet, doesn't matter, because afterwards we have the normalization. After normalizing the frame, everything is the same, and we filter and, and polish this frame, and we, gateway, we, we perform the gateway and the shaping till the egress, okay? Everything here is configurable. We can define how many blocks we need, what kind of blocks, what features, everything is configurable. This is the Elastic Gateway concept. Everything is parameterizable by the architect of the chip. Important to note here, one tricky point, the loopbacks. You, you can see here, uh, at the output of the gateway in, in red, okay? At the output of the gateway and at the output of the traffic shaper, we have loopbacks where we can recirculate these frames to the filtering and policing or to the gateway again, okay? This is important because we realize that part of the functionality that we require in a zonal gateway somehow demands this kind of loopbacks, okay? So that's the reason why we do this interconnection here. Let's focus now on some details of this architecture, some details about the microarchitecture inside this. Let's focus now on this first stage, how we move data from the physical layer of the port across the frame normalizer till the ingress queue, okay? This is the detail of our normalizer engine. So basically, we have two levels, control plane and data plane, in the data plane, basically what we do is just to shift the frame, the original frame, because we don't touch this at this level. But in the control plane, what we do is two things. Just to get the right information from the header of this data frame and save this in the instruction frame, and also make use of the configuration registers that are configured in this accelerator, okay? We have a memory map based on configuration registers where we define, for instance, what kind of, of port we have, if this is CAN or this is Ethernet, because based on that, we know what to do with this frame. Just configuring the network protocol here, we, we are giving the meaning to all the bits, the fields that we have in that frame, because as, as, as showed previously, it's not the same a CAN bus frame that an Ethernet frame, right? So the fields in the header are different. So here, with these configuration registers, the CPU is saying, I am configuring this normalizer for a CAN port, or I am configuring the same piece of silicon for an Ethernet port, okay? You, see, you can see here the elasticity of the solution. One only 
normalizer for whatever frame, as ingress frame. Okay, so basically we are composing the instruction, the internal instruction frame based on metadata. As you can see here in the image, we have different fields, and as, as I said before, we have we keep a header, payload, and trailer. And here is where we collect all the information for the next coprocessors in the chain to process the accordingly this frame. Now let's look at this stage. Okay, in the filtering and policing, no, 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 not too much to say. Basically, here we are going to have a TCAM and a regular expression uh, subsystem uh, in order to perform the the deep 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 search, uh, the, the search of, of 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 rules or or patterns in the in the payload. Okay, so basically with the TCAM and the regular expression searcher, we are able to, to manage all the, all the frame. So let's look now at the gateway, because this is the most powerful part of, of our design. So I am going to show you now a zoom of this area. Please remember, we have five, five blocks here. Q, intermediate queue, crossbar switch, gateway, crossbar switch, and egress queue. So if we zoom in here, we have this architecture. And you can see the intermediate queuing, okay, crossbar switching, the gateway engine in the middle, crossbar switch, and egress queue. Okay, in the gateway engine, basically in the gateway uh, part, basically we have a gateway engine that this is, this is uh, okay, we have a gateway engine and then we have different tasks or hardware accelerators designed specifically for one task, type, kind of task, okay? This is done also in hardware. Important to note also here, the loopback, how we integrate the loopback here. So imagine the case, for instance, you can see here that the outputs of the different tasks, we have O, 1, 2, and N, can be connected here to the FIFOs we have in the intermediate queuing. So this would be the way of how we recirculate some frame that has been processed in one of these tasks in the gateway stage back to the gateway. Because probably we have one frame that needs to process different tasks, one after the other or even in parallel. Okay? So this is one example of how we implement through these FIFOs and multiplexers or crossbars the loopbacks. Okay, so this is one view, and the second view is the SDN. So you can see here the control plane in the, in the top, okay, where we have the gateway engine. Here is where we evaluate what to do with the frames, and in the bottom we have the hardware accelerators, where we have the specific hardware to accelerate or to perform specific tasks, okay? So, with that, we are able to integrate many kind of functions in these different blocks, okay? As you can imagine here, we are able to embed many kind of heterogeneous functionality distributed through all these blocks, okay? So this is our idea about how to build something able to combine high performance functional safety and security requirements at the same time based on a processing path implemented in hardware based on hardware accelerators and these hardware accelerators all of them are parameterizable in order to deliver the right level of elasticity for this solution modeling how just uh, some details about the modeling of this, what we call 3D plus one. In order to model this zonal gateway architecture, SOC architecture, we manage two different concepts. The 3D, it relates to the high level design of sizing and scaling of, the, of, the, of our solution. 
dealing with three dimensions, x, y, and z, that they correspond to parallelism, publine, and loopback, together with the plus one related to the runtime partial reconfiguration. So we have to admit also change on the fly. This is the, the handling of the time uh, concerning functions and features. So basically what we do in this, in this architecture in, in terms of modeling 3D plus one is this, okay? So somehow we have to balance three different design parameters, okay? The level of parallelism, with this we control the area of the chip, the level of pipeline in terms of timing and latency, and the, the, Z, the third dimension is the loopback how we reuse this hardware through this loopback, through the recirculation of frames going back and forth to the right hardware accelerator that it's instantiated probably only once in our design in order to optimize hardware, okay? And apart from that, we have also the constraint of this runtime partial reconfiguration. So we need to allow, in some specific use cases, changes on the fly. So one example of this 3D modeling, okay? The parallelism. This is an example of matching an action, a simplified view, where you can see at any point in time, we are receiving ingress frames, different number of ingress frames per port, okay? What we have to do is just to process all of them in parallel. What we do is the following. For every instruction frame coming from this ingress, ingress frame, what we do is basically just to arbitrate in order to perform, process this frame, assigning this to the right hardware accelerator, okay? And this is done in parallel. So this is the job to be done, okay? For every ingress frame, we arbitrate it in order to be sent to the right hardware accelerator. And these hardware accelerators, this stack of hardware accelerators are working in parallel. So with this, with this uh, architecture, we are handling the parallelism, exploiting parallelism. Another example of this 3D modeling is the pipelining and loopback. And here we have one interesting use case. For instance, how we handle uh, encrypted frames. Imagine the case that one of the ingress frames is encrypted. We realize this because we check this in the header. We know that this is probably maxsec. And we realize that in order to process this frame, before processing the frame, we need to decrypt in order to know the real information there. So probably what we have to do is just to decrypt, going to the gateway and stage and perform the decryption there because we have one hardware accelerator responsible for the decryption, for the AES implementation. We decrypt the frame, we send back through the loopback to the filtering and policing again, and then once it is decrypted, we process it. And probably afterwards, we need to encrypt it again. We will do it through uh, moving this frame through the specific hardware accelerator for the encryption before sending forward to the egress. Okay, so this is an example of combination of pipeline and loopback in order to move data back and forth to the right hardware accelerator. And finally, the runtime, the plus one concept, the runtime reconfiguration. So here we have some examples. So you see, we have built a system, a solution that it's modular. Okay, this is not a monolithic solution. This is modular, okay? Because th th the solution needs to be modular. And apart from that, some of these modules shall be reconfigurable on the fly without interrupting the operation of the gateway controller, okay? So imagine one example, network intrusion detection system. Imagine the case that we are receiving frames, we are able to detect in the firewalling or the intrusion that in the in the in the in the system we are able to detect that these frames correspond to a pattern that it's an attack. Okay? So if we detect that, okay, when processing these kind of frames, we detect that they match a pattern that it's a tap, an identify attack that it's it's stored in our database as a, a clear attack, we need to react. If we know how to react, probably the reaction will be to drop the frames just reconfiguring the firewall, 
okay, saying this kind of patterns, please drop in the filtering and polishing because this is an attack. So this is a reaction. And this change of rules or addition of rules in the firewall is done automatically in hardware. We don't need the CPU intervention for that. Everything is managed in hardware. Okay, so somehow this is the picture. We have a modular system that apart from that can change on the fly. Okay, and finally, just some words about the, the, the built automation and prototyping. The point here is that apart from modeling this concept, we have created a tool in order to automate part of the development of this chip, okay? Here, uh, this tool is called Elastic Gateway Builder Tool. And basically what we do with this tool is just to automate the BHDL description of the SOC device, okay? So basically here, what we have is a library of ultra parameterized IP cores, okay? This is our, our, our core technology, okay? We have designed a set of IP cores in order to solve a specific a specific uh, function, functionality. And these IP cores have been designed with the right level of parameterization, configurable registers inside, because in this way, our solution can be adapted to whatever kind of problem. We can design an SOC for a low-end vehicle with a small gateway, or we can design with the same concept, with the same rules, a premium, SOC device in order to be integrated in a premium car with tens of ingress ports, egress ports, and so on. So somehow, once we have the library, the right library of IP cores, we can automate the process of defining the geometry, the shape, the interfaces, and the functionality that we require for this specific chip. Okay, so we can select which TSN standards we want to integrate in the chip, which ones are not necessary, and things like that. Which is the size of the queues that we need, uh, how many normalizers, and things like that. Okay, how many ingress ports, egress ports, so everything can be adjusted. And just by clicking a button, we generate the, BDA, the BHDL call of the entity in BHDL of our SOC device. And apart from that, we integrate there as components the library of the, the, the set of IP cores that we need for that solution. Everything is automa uh, uh, automated, okay? So basically, starting from parameters, we are able to fine tune the solution and generate the right chipset for that, okay? So from parameters to silicon, that's the, 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 build, the Elastic Gateway Builder tool, what, what it's doing, okay? Handling code, parameterizable code in BHDL. So in terms of design, here we have the B model. And basically, starting from the specifications of a customer, what we need to do is just to select the right parameters in order to meet these requirements and perform the design and development and verification and validation. So finally, just to conclude, uh, our proposal here is a, a specific hardware software co-design where instead of opting for this software-centric solution, for instance, based on AutoSAR, what we try to do is keep the application layer more or less the same, because in both sides we have CPUs running code, application layers, but somehow converting the, the basic software stack into hardware, okay? Trying to achieve better performance for the new requirements, coming requirements of zonal gateway controllers. We have prototyped this on this chip, the Zing UltraScale Plus and PSOC, having the processing system, also the ARM core processors there with programmable logic. Inside the programmable logic is where we instantiate our hardware, hardware coprocessors, IP cores. And this is how it looks like, our, our Elastic Gateway Controller and SOC prototype. Okay, and with that, that's, that's all today. Thank you for your attention.